Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe. While we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Everybody and welcome, welcome to Geek Enders. Yay! Hello, hello. With Yay. our fantastic good. guest Tim Ack. Good. good, you know what? Good. Right. <laughs> nothing, nothing derails a podcast like pause, good. or typing, then introduce guests. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I could. You know what? Every time uh-huh. I think to myself, I'm set. I did everything. I've got everything sorted and there's nothing left to do. And then the second I swap over, I go, except that. <laughs> we need so. like a podcast gremlin to sit in your room with you and do all the technical stuff. Oh so you can gosh. just have fun. That would be amazing. Right? I would love a like podcast it, gremlin. Don't, don't you don't, have a child? I don't know how Shouldn't you find those. Shouldn't they be put those. to work yet? Right? <laughs> <sighs> she has school. She needs to be educated first. Jesse. Educate her in <laughs> podcasting. <laughs> Set for life. You know Honestly, what? not wrong. Like, Bring her right the industry. <laughs> She's gonna have the people to work with right away. It's mm-hmm. done. It's a family business. It's a family business. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. You'll take it up too. You will. Yeah. Just saying, dude. Jesse, I need you to know. Sorry, mm-hmm. Tim. Side note, but just, <laughs> I need you to know. Sorry, guest. Sorry, okay. guest. Give me just a second no, here. I'm chilling. You're fine. Um, <laughs> I'm easy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All week, people have been showing up in my chat and being like, Jesse says that your daughter's a mean girl. Confirm. Deny. I don't like this. I haven't said any. I haven't mentioned your daughter once outside of last week's podcast. I know. I don't think about your daughter in, in like any sort of way. <laughs> It's not a thing on my mind. I'm not. I think they just watched the podcast and then went to you. And then they're like, give she's little, live. Eh. I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to go soccer in the chin. Yeah. I'm not over leave. here like, <laughs> welcome to the Dodger podcast where I talk hot goss about Dodger's family. Did you know that Dodger's kid is a mean girl? The meanest. She and her friends, <laughs> Tiffany spelled not how you think. And Kaylee spelled not how you think. Are they go around school mm-hmm. and they cause trouble? Yeah, like, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I just want you to know. Like, I'm just saying. Okay, the, thing, right. the things you say okay. they have repercussions. <laughs> I'm just starting her. Like, if it filters to them, imagine if it filters to the school, and then people are That's not so good. True. They're gonna be like, watch out for her. She's the boss of this school, and then she'll be <laughs> like, the what is the. The girl in the Japanese anime that's like, I'm the tough girl in charge of school. That one. <laughs> I don't know these things. In, in the just... only anime? Yeah, who is that yeah. girl in that anime? You know, I'm the just... girl in the anime who's like, I'm the tough girl who runs the school. Totally, yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't... <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm, You're I'm quite the imagination. I, I need this kind of imagination in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tim. It's all this, I've so, got. This whole, this whole, like, this whole, like, manifestation is amazing. I need this. <laughs> yeah, Jesse's good. All, Jesse's good at, at spinning a yarn. You know, I feel like it's we're so all, we're all good at it in different directions. <laughs> That's the nicest way of saying bullshitter. He's good at spinning a yarn. He's good at spinning a no, yarn. No, it's not even bullshit. No, it's the whole like I, I I appreciate a good story and like you know creation from nothing. It's like it's <laughs> it's great. It's great. I I would have never come up with something like that. I mean, you're you are also very good at that. 
You I ha- used to you be, have not to, so much anymore. You have to be to be doing RP all the time, dude. You're like on your toes yeah. constantly. <laughs> I'm a rea- I'm a reactive creator. Like it's I, I do really well with what's put in front of me and mm-hmm. I can just I can just bounce off of shit real easy. It's that that's where I do well. Coming up with something uh, out of nothing usually is my struggle. Mm. That's but yeah. So you uh, Sam has talked about what's this the balls before rolling? with like cuz cuz I was saying that I find things like GTA RP really intimidating. And he was like, oh, honestly, yeah. yeah, he was like, honestly, you can just make a character and then just like wait for something crazy to happen and then just involve yourself if that's yeah, what you it, want, it. if that's what you that's want to do. do so. Yeah, that's a welcome to my stream. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're I'm the guy, to a T. I'm the guy, I'm doing the thing and somebody got shot. Gonna go see what's <laughs> going on with that. I think that's why I do. So I just got, I, I started doing cop again, like last month and then. Uh, like that's a very bounce off of shit type of like job or position and the whole thing. So you can just like, yeah. you know, something happens, you show up, you've already got your training, what you got to apply to it in certain ways. And you're like, all right, just some, somebody speeds in front of you. All right, pull them over. Let's get, you know, get that started. Do you like, it's really, uh, it's really reactionary. Do you like, um, doing the cop role? Um, I think as a cop role it, it, for me, like that, like I said, like, being a reactionary type of creator, I, I think it's better. But when it comes to like my criminal character, I really like the character, but it's, you know, you really have to like come up with stuff that you want to do. And like, you, mm-hmm. you got to force yourself in that direction, which is good now that I've done that for a while. You kind of get used to it, but it's a, um, it's kind of, it you know, you really, it's, it's kind of, it can be tricky. It can be tricky to actually get something rolling. Yeah. You got to have the people around too. If you have your crew and they're all like going to bed and I'm a late night guy. So most of the time they are, if they're not around, then you kind of have to come up with something on your own, which can be a much better struggle. If the people you're used to collaborating with is they're just not there. Have you thought about being a kingpin like character (laughs) where all you do, because you can't line up your schedule with people is you're like, I have a job for you. 24 (laughs) hours to complete it. And if you do, riches will be yours. Right? Would, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, then, I will then, I will do that. And then your RP session at night when you're by yourself can be like you and hired goons and you're like, "All right, goons, what is our plan <laughs> to take over the city?" Right? And then and that, you well, the part of, the problem is my character is already a goon. <laughs> oh, well, there's a, uh, so a, there's a coming of age line. goon story where you become yeah. the kingpin. It's open. I can do my own I can jump in and be my own kingpin. If I start I do, killing other players, I did that at one point. Hmm. And that was I'm my like, mafia character. Oh man, I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I don't. No mafia. I want to run for mayor. I want to like. Oh yeah, I want to do well, the Moon whole Moon's thing. Doing that. Yeah, but I would kill. I would. I would. I would kill everyone else who was in the way of me as mayor. Of course. And I'd be like, the streets are crime is taking over the streets. <laughs> All the mayors are my, dying. My That's crazy. My opponent was brutally murdered by a mysterious person. Shh, go away. By a mysterious, <laughs> by a person I don't know. The background guy's like, sir, you still haven't paid me for assassinating your opponent. And he's like, uh, I don't I don't know what that's about. Yeah, I do a whole, <laughs> it'd be great. Jesse, if at some point you decide to jump into GTA RP and do that, can I be like your weird mousy assistant? Uh, First off, yes. Second off, great. I will always tell you to do the thing. There'd be, no, I'd be like, do the thing. <laughs> Enjoy figuring out what, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Well, M- Moon Moon, it, it's kind of funny though. It's like they, they had this, like, we have a mayor now, it's Moon Moon, but his character, like, they did this time shift of like plus five years and, you know, the island shut down, war broke out, okay, whatever it was. Come back, everything's reset, economy's rebuilding, government's rebuilding. And he, like, his character is like a previous ex terrorist that was in maximum security prison that is now out and now he's running, he ran in made mayor so so it's a it, it's really interesting the things that he's doing with it like overseeing the pd and coming up with new legislation and all that stuff so the mayor is a really interesting like unique spot which yeah i feel like you probably have iteration. to commit a lot of time to be mayor as well it's, oh yeah he lives it he lives it i've never done gta rp in any way except i watch people do it all the time mm-hmm. and so everything i see it seems insane to me 
in ways that I like. A great example is I was watching our uh, dear sweet boy Octo play, and he was literally just working in a restaurant for six hours, and oh, I. Yeah don't understand why i was like you could just work in a real restaurant for six hours he's like yeah but this is great i'm like how is it great in what way no one's explained to me ever are you always starting from the bottom do you uh, is it do you have nothing what are the rules how would one why do i have to work a job what is <laughs> i give so many questions and now that you're here i'm just gonna ask them all to, you are representing everyone who has ever played right now mm hmm well, that's like working a job. Like the problem is like, it's weird. Like they say RP is like, in RP money's like, like a support or a tool to help you role play. I feel like it's sometimes a freaking requirement because it, it gate keeps without having it, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can't like do the things you may want to do without building a, an amount of wealth to then throw at it towards your criminal ventures. And so- sure. Is, so uh, what was it, Senior Buns? Which server do you remember? I I, I don't. Either way, I honestly either way you work in a freaking kitchen, yeah. so yeah, you just you just get paychecks over time. But the the thing is with the restaurants, you you never know who's coming in and out of there, so there could just be a random thing. Someone might come in and rob you. Some you know some might be a you know a nasty like customer or something like that, and we're talking crap about the food, and then you're like, what you know? So things can happen out of nowhere when you do something like that. I it's really funny. You need like you need players that aren't trying to be mayor or kingpin, right? In order for the like sort of living, breathing yeah, world aspect to work. It, yeah. yeah. Um, I've changed what I want to be. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be a criminal <laughs> in the sense of a guy who shoots the place up. I want to be a criminal in the sense of a corporate executive. Can I be just a guy who sits at a desk and takes everyone's money and does nothing? I feel like that's the evilest thing you could do. <laughs> and I think I would thrive at it in Grand Theft Auto. Because imagine that there's no Grand Theft or Auto. It's just me collecting everyone else's money. I think so. I mean, it depends on your angle. Like some people do like loan companies. And it's like you'll take the money back uh, or you'll loan money out. You know, and they have to pay back interest and then you go to civil court and things like that. And like, you know, just like loan sharking rates or something like that. Of All right. If you don't pay this by the first week, it's 50 percent, you know, hike or something like that. And just but really like, scam people. Could I just get a job as an executive with no experience and then fire slash lay off my way to getting some sort of like executive package that gives me more money for doing even less work i think you're embracing a bit of the dnd element here where they just hand you something really cool yeah. right, about, right away you don't get yeah, that like yeah you come could, off the could, plane with like shoes <laughs> yeah could i like join the game but my father already be president of a company and they just give it to me is that I mean, depends I if that? the server is cool enough to let you do that. Most of the time, they give you like they start you off as like borderline homeless. So, and everybody starts off the same. So that's the that's the one issue. Like the pre setup, not always a thing. Could I get a hmm. small two million dollar loan? Is that possible? <laughs> Just a small one. I mean, you can technically one. do something like that if you popped in and be like, "I need a loan for this amount," and then you become you use that to leverage off of. But you know, okay, you can end up in civil court. Right. All right. Can I uh, definitely okay. go to court? Can I give you my character pitch? I pitched this mm -hmm. to Sam. Um, I really want because I wouldn't be able to commit a ton of time, right? But if I was going to join a server, I would want to be a person who logs on. And he was saying that you can, in some weird finagly way, you can set up a radio station on servers. Oh, yeah. 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 I would want to basically do my own coast to coast show. I would just mm. I would log on and just talk about really weird conspiracy theories for like a full hour and then log off. <laughs> I think that'd be great. I, I don't know. That would have to have some sort of server functionality. But yeah, I think that I, I don't think there's enough done on the radio. I think that would be great. It would be fun. And that's, people could call in. <laughs> that's you should do a call in for people in the game. So people who are playing can call in and be like, I saw a leprechaun downtown. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. And You're then so brave the best for part calling. would be. 
you know people would listen. Like, I saw a leprechaun, and then the next day, there would be someone on the server dressed up like leprechaun downtown, <laughs> <Yeah>. running around <laughs> hiding. And be like, I saw a leprechaun, and you could be in the game. Like, I saw the chupacabra. And someone could dress up and be like, I'm the chupacabra. You know that would be amazing. That is so good. Thank you. That would be amazing. Yeah, I, I love it. I think that Thank I think you. that's unique, and not, nobody really does anything like that. They, they'll do like events a lot. There's a big music crowd. So they do a lot of these like custom music stations, but it's all like pre downloaded as you connect to the server. Mm. So all these custom songs that everyone's been working on, they download to your computer. And then when you switch the radio around, I think it might be timed in a way, but they're all custom radio channels. So then it'll just play one of those songs. So you have this huge like music community, but nothing really enough live like that. Right. I think that'd be great. If the functionality is just... there, somebody should use like, it. You could also just do it in advance, like uh, and just play it. Yeah, do a radio play mm -hmm. of you doing like, "All right, caller, welcome," and you can just have all your like friends be like, "I saw the Bigfoot in the woods." That would be hilarious, actually. <laughs> just reach like, out just to different people. <laughs> yeah, that'd be easy. That'd be easy fix if you're recording it and just like upload it. Yeah, absolutely, easily. Yeah, easy done. That'd be really fun. Or That'd you could take hilarious. it from like maybe actually go through a live thing and then have people calling you and be like, you know, pre-recorded live content thing. Call in if right. you want to be on here. It'll be you know broadcast. You know, broadcast is like. Can you live in day. trailers? Yeah, they do. They just this the, the server mod they have go. these. So they they have like houses you can buy and then they just release trailers. Those got bought up immediately because they're tra like a lot cheaper. Mm. And then you can decorate them. You have to you have to buy all the furniture and shit. It's that's right. expensive as yeah. hell. But you know, do flooring, paints on the wall, like set up a computer if you want, or a bed. And it's very second bathrooms. life. It's very much like that, yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of functionality with it that helps with the game and shit. It um, is funny that because it's GTA, it's like cooler than Second Life. You know what I mean? But it's <laughs> yeah. roughly the same thing. But it's just it like is. it's Grand Theft Auto, dude. So it's cooler. It's definitely more MMO aspect, I would say, than sure. Second Life. The social like experiment of it all is, I could see that. But when it comes to like the gameplay and the action of it all, and the evolution of your character, you know, with Second Life, it's just a microphone and dicks. Sure. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the sort of stuff that they're able to do on the servers is is changing all the time, right? People are coming up with like new functionality. Yeah, new well, ideas. They, I, no, I'm on, I'm on no pixel and they have uh, it started a very civilian oriented and then they started trickling in updates over time mm -hmm. of like civilian meaning like you could either be a garbage worker or a delivery driver, this group six money bag, money transporter, um, restaurant worker. What else? There's one more tow trucking. So there was all this stuff mechanic and that was like your basic jobs and that, that rode for a while. And then they started trickling new mechanics over time, like, you know, uh, growing weed and then selling weed and delivering like that. So there's, there's this evolution that you start seeing through development, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Have, but, uh, have they ever added something in and then been like, nobody's using this, never mind, <laughs> just like taking it out. Um, they kind of bolster it by like the greed of people. So like hunting wasn't really used that much. They added that and then they made it ridiculously worse. And then like everybody was up there. Mm. <laughs> so, so the greed, you just appeal to the greed in people and they'll <laughs> just follow where the money is. It's hilarious. Cause you just start seeing the, this one group that just moves around. And if you see where they are, you know, that's where you can mm. make decent money if you ever need it. Um, so uh, yeah. I was doing a, a VR RP thing for a while that was like mm -hmm. once a week for four hours. Um, oh, yeah. And it, 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 I did that once. Yeah, it tried to have the same sort of vibe of like, you know, there's lots of different people and everybody's got their own, you know, job and role and like the, on the map and stuff like that. Um, and I guess because of, of how we're still learning about VR and what you can do with like the servers with a, a virtual thing like that, there would be stuff that would get added and then the whole server would get completely bogged down. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'd be like, oh shit, right? We'd all have to like adjust to figure out how to have it work well with a the system. A little bit more efficient, yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah. I was, uh, 
I did that too. I did a cyberpunky one. Mm. I think CR or whatever it was. And um yeah, I was I was kind of your idea, Jesse. I was like one of the corporal execs and it was just like scummy type of Were you playing with like uh, on the side. Kraken in them? Yeah. Well, I don't remember who was around. And in the corpo area, I, I remember Devin Nash being up there. He was mm. one of the corpos. It's still, yeah. It was, it was really weird because you had like the underground, you had the main city, you had corpo land and the desert. I think he might have been one of the desert people. Yeah, it's it's the same one. They've just like renamed it now. Um, yes, right. Yeah, and it's I, Neon Divide now. Is it Neon Divide? Thank you. I was going to say mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in there. I haven't actually touched anything. I, I got a new re-R set. I've <laughs> have you guys threw away a lot of shit. Have you guys seen those those like VR those huge VR treadmills that you can get for your house? Yeah. Are you talking about the like the like it looks like a, I don't know, like your feet just slide back and yeah, forth like or a something? Weird yeah. Dish and you like <laughs> yeah. strap yourself yeah, the in. Dish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm so curious what those are like. I'm more excited about the Disney thing that they developed. What Disney thing? That uh, it's Ooh. for a ride rides, maybe people movers. I don't know, <laughs> but um, it is new flooring that moves you. Oh, and so you can sit in a chair and it'll move the chair. You can stand and it'll move you. Um, you can walk on it and it will move so that uh, it's like you're walking. But you're, it's basically what you would imagine the floor of a holodeck would be like. Where How can they move around through infinite space if there are walls? Well, mm. the floor would have to move. And so, yeah, the, Disney's done a bunch of videos of it. It's going to be used for something, but it's the coolest thing I've, I've seen, period, in a long time. And I'm like, yo, that's the future. That's how you do VR and stuff. How do you not it's trip, very though, interesting. Dude. That sounds like I would trip. Well, it's it's like uh, they're very small, so you're not gonna trip on it. Mm. Okay. Like if you can find the video, the video literally they're like little tiny. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's like um, if you're looking at uh, like uh, I'm trying to think of what that game like either Othello or Go maybe where you're flit- switching from white to black. Yeah. That's kind of what the that's kind of what the things on the ground are doing, and it's moving. It's. It's one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. And so I'm like, yo, screw those treadmills. This <laughs> is the future. Ooh. Probably a way off future, but mm-hmm. it looks cool as hell. What if it was yeah. just like a like a just a flat square like treadmill that just detected your movement? So like when you're moving around, like it just balanced your you know, just kind of pushed back exactly the same speed you're going. So you could just kind of like turn any direction and feel like I you're guess moving that'd around be, the world. It'd be tough to do the stops, right? Because mm. at some point you would stop and then mm. it would still be going and you would go down. Well, that's on it. Ha- it would have to track your feet to determine. Right. You know, what direction to move it. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it, uh, Enzo, it, yeah. It's called the hollow tile. If anyone is curious. Hollow tile. Yeah. I want to see. The Disney Hollow Tile. Hollow Tile. Oops. Hollow. Imagineer makes history with Disney Hollow Tile. Yeah, yeah. The, if you, there's a bunch of videos, and it's just like one of the coolest, goofiest looking things. Oh, oh my gosh. It looks totally different than I thought. Yeah. It's, it's straight up just like you can zip around on it. Hmm. I don't. It's like if you go, if there's a video on YouTube Ooh. at Disney Parks, and that, like three minutes. I don't know, three minutes, 40 seconds. They show a demonstration. It's very cool. Man, our holodecks, it, well, they're, they're on the horizon. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I want a holodeck. Mm. I, need to, I, need, I need to experience it. I was close. I've almost been there. Mm. I've almost experienced perfect VR. And now I've got a taste. And I want something. This looks a little slippy. I, I, I'm they... sure that's why they're moving so slowish you know what i yeah. mean mm-hmm. it's very clearly like uh there's when they sit in the chair and the chair moves it's very clear that's the applicable like that's what it's for for a ride so the oh, ground right, on right, a ride right. and you can like move in the chair and they can move yeah, you that's around cool. but walking on it i think that would be like that's the that's the future i would assume of vr like content because after really? a while you can only do so much with the headset Right, because it's still gonna yeah, make in a, people in a sick. confined space. Yeah, true. Yeah, and and uh, 
you know, if, if you can combine, for example, the technology of that ground, whatever that's called, the holotile, plus the uh, spatial, I don't know if awareness is the right word, but like the way they use the cameras and visuals in, say, the, uh, the Vegas, like, whatever that sphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm, combining mm -hmm. the two of those would be trippy as hell. Like, that would be some amazing, uh, I don't even know, like, a, not a tourist attraction, but just an experience. That'd be very cool. That would be pretty cool. You'd have to get that, like, spatial sense without the headset. Mm hmm But, it, I mean, Instead it's... Being, it's I mean, headset's not bad, though. You'd have to yeah, be Yeah, it just to, depends Yeah, you'd on, have to, like, like send two images. The, the idea of having the headset... And then the rest of you can still function without having to have other stuff. I don't know. It's it's it becomes tougher and tougher the the more you want to make it real, right? And so cool though, the more yeah. stuff you have on you and the more things in your hands and stuff, the more gamified the more it is. But it I want is. I want to get it like I'm just in that world. Like oh look at me, I'm in the world. I mean, I think that would be cool. We had um, a couple of weeks ago, we had Kraken on as a guest and he was talking about VR a little bit and was saying that um, from his understanding and talking to people that VR development is like so much closer to, to feeling realistic than we realize. But the problem is, is that the technology is advancing fast enough that people aren't developing anything with it. They're, they're just mm. developing the technology instead of making like any products for us to use really um, right so there's a lot of like feature demos and yeah. not a lot of depth to it uh, yeah well what's that game there's i think i think the general idea which this this happens quite a bit uh whenever you talk about the like the like gta and rp and stuff a lot of it does kind of drift during these conversations to something like VR because it, it builds on the immersion of gameplay. And I think immersion is just like what people are really seeking in, in stuff like this. And like, that's a, that that's like, that's why all these games that have a huge immersive element just succeed so well. I mean, look at people like playing Skyrim. That was one of the most immersive games and VR just being mm -hmm. like, you can't be anymore. Like you're like putting yourself in another world. So I think that's going to end up taking off quite a bit in this near future because the higher level immersion is where I think things are going to sell like crazy. Either higher, it's either like triple A, like a GTA Six, which is a pretty immersive game. You're throwing yourself in a world that's going to just be ridiculously beautiful, and people are just going to live it. Or like, yeah, like something like this where you just feel like you're in there. Yeah, I mean, there's. There's a like the human brain. All it is 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 interpreting signals and electricity and stuff. So there's like a reality in which you can make stuff very immersive. The problem is how many people are gonna be like, yeah, yeah, shoot that into my brain, like you know. But yeah, the true. possibility is there. You can like the stuff we see is is literally just stuff we're interpreting with our brain, right? So right. it's possible that you could do anything and tell the brain, yeah, this is what you're seeing. And so it could be that that's a thing that, you know, you walk into a room and suddenly you're like, I'm in a different world. And then you leave the room and suddenly you're not anymore. It's possible. But again, it's one of those things like... Like Westworld. Yeah. Yeah. How many people <laughs> would want that though? You know what right. I mean? Like a lot of people like the idea, but I'm not going to get brain zapped. Right. But also, you know, the cost involved in vr right now is still a big barrier to people Huge. getting into it and the more advanced the technology is and the more they need to charge for stuff that barrier is just going to get bigger you know sure yeah yeah i mean it, it, it's i imagine it's going to be the same as uh west world or going to space is currently now this is like a rich people play thing <laughs> like if you have billions you're going to go off to your like secret you know, country western <laughs> land with your robots. Now you're gonna that's the life you're gonna live. Mm -hmm. And the rest of us, I assume, will just be like, okay, back to work. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, there's definitely an opt-in with something like that for sure. That's mm -hmm. yeah, the if it doesn't become any kind of standard, it's yeah, it's gonna be a difficult mountain to climb. I, I don't know. The the problem I think the problem is a lot of these companies like claim to have it and they just fail so miserably. So it like it like you have this op opposing effect like 
like skull and bones who claims to have like the one of the best games ever and it's just so flat and you know even even the sailing didn't really feel too immersive at all it was oh just kinda, that's so sad uh-huh. I, I i must say this and i just want to never let anyone tell you you're wrong when you know a game sucks this is all <laughs> i'm gonna say i'm not gonna name any names right but i'm gonna say a year maybe two years ago when skull and bones was still like more ethereal Mm -hmm. i was like yo i'm so excited i love yo i loved assassin's creed black flag so i'm like really excited for skull and bones i think it's gonna be really cool and Uh a person i know who works at ubisoft was like nah dude (laughs) oh no (laughs) oh that's so sad (laughs) so you know i'll just say they're like he's like nah nah Nah. like what they do is gonna flop on on flop yeah i think everyone knew yeah i'm pretty sure the there's no inside secret that everyone there was like yeah, no, this game's gonna suck. What what's wrong with the game? Like, why doesn't it it's, hit right? It's um as vast as an ocean, deep as a puddle. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a game that was in development hell for so long that it passed between multiple teams, mm. multiple ideas. Like it isn't it isn't a game that has a focus. It's like we're trying okay. to be something. We just don't know what. Anyway, here's a game. It's it's like trying to be the destiny of like pirate games, but there's no missions. It's like you just interesting. Okay. I mean, yeah. So, like when you get to like, it's like okay, you're doing what you're doing quests, and it's a lot of kill, bring back, go here, bring transport, whatever. It's just a lot of a lot of that, a lot of that, and then you pretty much just. F- go loot get gather build ship until you get best ship and then you're like okay well i can upgrade the guns and then you upgrade your guns and then it's becomes like a token grind for things to get like the higher tier guns and at that point you don't even want to do it Mm. so you're just like it's not at all enjoyable at a certain point you're like yeah it's like do i care about getting the best ship like there's one pvp like scenario at a certain point and you're like i'm not bothering anymore are there any we're gonna make a game where you hang out on a pirate ship games that have like really crushed it? Ooh. Sea of Thieves. Yeah, right? this that's still that's still, the still going. Yeah. At at first though, it had a lot of uh Sure. Uh what's the word that I'm looking for? <laughs> yeah. People, people were pretty harsh with it when it first came out, but it's stuck around. Oh, absolutely. Wait, which um, ones? Sea of Thieves? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I was I was looking forward to seeing these a long time before you came out. That was that was that sounded so cool. And then I was like, eh, that's what I'm all, all I'm doing is everything is just everybody has everything, and then you just get cosmetics. Like really, that's all. I'm like, oh, I I think I like Sea of Thieves didn't know exactly what it was when it launched, hmm. and has since found itself. I I I you know from seeing people play, um, but. Yeah, I played when it first launched and was like, all right, this is like, it's not for me, but this is fine. And that's is me wanting a pirate game. I was like, yo, I'm right. really excited for pirate games. But it's, uh, yeah, it didn't feel very piratey. Something about it, it was just like ship game. But it didn't feel like you were pirates. You were right. just like, well, like, dude's on a ship. And if we see another ship, we'll fight that ship. But mm-hmm. there was no piratey. You were just like a privateer of anything. You're like, okay, we all have, you know, we all have cool stuff and we look cool. Let's boat around you know like <laughs> I mean, there once, wasn't much to do yeah. i'm not sure was voip was voip a thing or was that like initially launched because I, I know i know i don't I know think if it was. so because you could yell at people on other boats right could With you the megaphone thing yeah um yeah you'd be like hey we're boring you and then you'd have to now get that really close. that's where it does i think that's where it wins i don't know if it was this group or not but yeah that i think like that in that sense like that's where that's where my uh my whole focus in gaming i feel like is such a huge deal because like that brings a human element which creates mm-hmm. complete variety that you'll never mm-hmm. experience twice in a row so as long as you're, yeah like the, like all, all the games like that and that was been my, my focus in the like from day one it used to be just like an rp thing but then i realized that it's not the rp that i'm really into it's the human element that's added with sure. using the voice and all that yeah. so like that was so like you look at something like Tarkov, like they added voice and then it was, it became like, a, obviously it's still got, it's hardcore shooter types of people, but 
I know, I know it definitely added an element that was not there before that can change the outcome of scenarios, but, mm. but yeah, I think, right. I think that's where you can really add it. So if you have like, if you want a piratey theme, like you can kind of bring that element and, and they started getting there too, I think with the treasure and adding the, uh, parts of Caribbean, like DLC to it, mm -hmm. which was, I thought was really good. Yeah. They did a monkey also, island. Monkey island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Is it Mogallon? Yeah, it, it's it is the exact same trajectory as No Man's Sky, and that when it launched, it was like okay, and then they just put time and energy into making it something. So mm. the audience that stuck around loves it, and it's bringing in new people because they're putting it on things like you know uh, Xbox and Game Pass, and so it's like try this. I mean, it's it's uh, again Game Pass. Well, I don't think is great money. for devs, but it's definitely great for players. Because you're getting so much stuff on there, it continues to be the best deal on gaming. Well, Game Pass it just is, yeah. Mm. Oh, there's no better. There's no better money spent on video gaming than Game Pass, dude. Yeah, it feels it's, like every time I play something, someone in chat's like, "Oh, this is on Game Pass." I'm like, "God, the mm -hmm. value there is crazy." Even on PC, it's worth it. Yeah, the PC Game Pass is amazing. It, it and it, and again, it's one of those things where it's like, look, I'm not sure. Who is out there being like Xbox is the only thing I play on, but because uh, if you're playing Xbox, everything's on PC, and so you can just play it on PC. But I understand that some people don't have the PC to play. But it's like, okay, so why did you pick Xbox? And every single time, every single time, Game Pass, every single time, mm. it isn't like, oh, the games on Xbox are superior. It's like, no, 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 I'm just getting the best deal in gaming right now. And it's better than anything PlayStation has, period. Yeah. PlayStation might have some cool games, but like Game Pass is a steal. Mm. You're buying, you pretty much have to buy every game. Does PlayStation have like their, like a pass like that? That I don't know. PlayStation, PlayStation, Plus. PlayStation Plus has like multiple tiers now. So there's yeah. PlayStation Plus, which is going to get you like two, three games. And then the next tier is a few more games. And then the next tier is like, a full ass catalog of all the, like PlayStation X, like PSX, PS2. Like there's a bunch of things that you can play, but it's just like how much money you're willing to pay. Mm. Um, okay. And so it, there's a lot. There's there's too many. I'm gonna say there's too many tiers on PlayStation. But um, yeah. Again, like just knowing what people like. No, uh, Sony's right not to go into it too much because I don't think anyone on PlayStation is playing. A, like Sony's like we're selling games and that's it we're just going to sell games. And I guess like statistically analytically it's showing that people on PlayStation are just like buying the games. Again, this could be a chicken egg thing where it's like well you're not offering to sell them a pass. Right. So all they're doing is buying single games. But they're like I mean the math is this way. Meanwhile, uh Xbox is like no no no, we're going to keep Game Pass going. And even though, even when devs are like, it's really not good for us in the long run, uh, it's still really great for consumers. So I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's a I mean, yeah, I mean, look at Steam. Steam is the same way, right? It's all buy game, add to library. Yeah. So I guess that's very similar in that that business model. And Steam seems to not be doing too bad either. I mean, I got only those. <laughs> what kind of money pours through that company? Jesus. Dude. Yeah. Didn't they have to remove like a ton of games though because they weren't actually games am i making that up hold on <laughs> steam yeah i mean i have to believe it but i also know that steam also backtracks constantly like when they were like guys we're gonna get rid of any erotic game and then they were like our bad turns out you love them so we're gonna make them <laughs> yeah. way more prevalent and we're gonna throw them on the front page enjoy and you're like oh, okay <laughs> thanks dudes <laughs> Yeah, that's hilarious. They do, they do that all. I know, the there time. was there was a point where that was like all over the place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they like let me look at the top games on Steam, and it's like, oh, what, are, what the hell is that? <laughs> Every time I log in, the one one of the top games always is a game that I'm like, what is this called? Pussy Master? <laughs> what? Same. <laughs> Yeah, except you buy them. Sometimes I do. That's true. That's why it keeps telling me to buy them. But like, but still, I feel like not me. I download them for free on the internet. Oh my goodness, a pirate! I, I have to change the topic back to pirate games. 
Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, please, please. I'm more of like a porn writ. Po- no, that sucked. Yeah. Hold on, Try let again. me redo no, that. Rewind, we can redo rewind, rewind, rewind. No. Rewind, rewind. Yep, rewind. yep, 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 yep. Try again. A porn irate. No, that sucks. Hold on, rewind, <laughs> rewind. We can. <laughs> um, a, oh, a private tier. Oh, that's good. If no one got me, chat got me. There we that's, go. That's, yep. Yep. That nice. works. Nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. We got there in the end. Solid, solid, yeah. Yeah, we got there. Uh, <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> yep. Oof. No. Um, so this this is a heel turn. Sorry, but uh, am I am I misremembering? World Book Day is not a thing in America, right? No, okay, it definitely, has definitely to not be. something I've, I've. When when we were kids. All right. Well, I probably was a kid before you but when we were kids um like we would have the scholastic book book fair right and they come through with all the books and there'd be posters be like world book day i remember that vividly it may not be a thing anymore because we have issues with books in the states but so true i don't i don't recall ever hearing anything about world book day until i moved here because here they make a whole I've never I've never even heard about it. Thank you. Here they make a whole big ass deal out of it where like um kids go dressed up as their favorite book character, quote unquote, and like bring in a book and like you know, tell each other about the book and a whole it's a yeah, whole it looks thing. Like it's just it's a big thing in UK and Ireland. Is it a different th- so it says what is World Book Day in the USA? April twenty third. <clears throat> Well, it's the, the same, same day, but it's it's a charity it's event held annually in the UK and Ireland. Is there? Then looks why like do they the call it for World it. Book Day? Oh, someone like someone we have said the World, World Series of <laughs> Baseball. <laughs> oh, That's so true. you guys just do it. You guys do it differently. That's the difference. There are two World Book Days. Okay, hit me. In in other countries around the world, ours was yesterday. Right, in other countries around the world, World Book Day is celebrated the 23rd of April, but the UK opted for a different date. Of course we The did. reason oh. for this is because the uh, had the UK kept the original date, the event would have clashed with Easter school holidays. Mm. And now we know. And now we know. Yeah, so you just have a different day. It's just a different day. Yeah, I mm-hmm. don't remember I don't remember World Book Day ever being a thing in America. I do remember scholastic book fairs though. I, oh man, the Scholastic Book Fair, that's where you'd see the kids who had money buy the books you always wanted to buy. And I didn't want to make like it sad, idiot. but I 100% almost never got books. <laughs> I never got anything because we didn't have any money. So my, I would sit there and watch the kids who were rich buy like stacks of cool books. And I'd be like, man, I want another scary stories to tell in the dark, right? Like, you know, it'd be, I'd love a babysitter's club and goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. Or that, yeah, one that was book Goosebumps that- Day. Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah, remember the book? Those the, three. This is so specific. Do you remember the book that the rich kid always had? It was always the rich kid. <laughs> it uh-huh. was a book of like find the hidden items in the book. And it was like uh, all these illustrations and there were hidden things in the book. And if you found all of them, you would win a prize. It was like you'd win money no. because there were so many hidden items. It was, I'm trying to remember what this book was called, but it was – huge and kids would get it all the time but it was always the rich kid and he'd always be like yes of course it is it called i spy maybe and now i gotta look this up oh, i spy book yeah i don't remember that oh i don't even remember um, that either yeah it may be it was something it the art looked it looked gorgeous this is interesting maybe it is an i spy book i don't know i'm looking at them and it could be but it was it was roughly along the same thing Mm. where it was a bunch of hidden things in some really cool art. And it was like, wow, this is so neat to look at. And you would just be jealous. I was constantly jealous of kids getting up of books. Y'all books. I could get, I could get so many books today. And I'm like, what happened to that kid? That was so jealous of books. Yeah. That's lovely. I had all the magic eyes. Magic eyes were my, Oh my God. I I totally forgot about those. Those are amazing. Oh yeah. I would cross I, my I eyes. I got so sl- good at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, got, I got so good. I'd be just like, all right, yep, let's see it. Next one. <laughs> man. Yeah, man. The old cross your eyes. Hope to see something amazing. 
A classic. This is, um, it's not a schooner. It's a sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious. Apparently, um, sometimes you can like contact uh, libraries and donate money. So if a kid shows up and they don't have money for a book, you can be like the book fairy and they get to pick out a book on your dime. I was like, I would love to do that. Call up the library at my old high cool. school and be like, yo, <laughs> if a kid comes in and they want a book, give it to them. I think that would be fun. I would love it if they gave you a wing at your old high school. <laughs> you know, like in the library, yes. it's just like your name is above a hallway of books. Mm-hmm. I think that's a lasting legacy, but those books only uh, Yuri on Ice. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. Did I nail? Did I nail it? Yep. Am that I is good? that is certainly the name of an anime. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Close enough. If if we were guys, if the three of us were going to the same school and we all mm. had to show up dressed as a book character, who would we go as? I did not come up with an idea for this ahead of time. I need to think about it. Mm, um, how old are we in this scenario? Um, let's say we are nine. Nine? Yeah. Nine? Oh, God. We're nine. I, oh, I, at oh. nine years old, <laughs> I know exactly who I'd be. Okay. Uh, I'd be Mr. Muster. Mr. Muster was a character who uh, had a zoo mm-hmm. and... Uh, he was friends with all the animals at the zoo, and then he the animals followed him home, and the zookeeper was like, Mr. Mustard, where's the animals? He's like, they're not in my house, but they're definitely in his house. Uh-huh. And it's, you know, it's a zoo for Mr. Mustard, my favorite book. Uh, at nine years old, that was a good that was a good ass book. I dressed up like him because he just looked like an old man with like a bowler hat. Nice. And I could do that easily. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. I think around nine, ten years old is when I started reading Tamara Pierce. So I'd probably show up as Alana, Alana from the Tamara Pierce books, who is a badass girl who dressed up as a knight and became a a, a powerful warrior. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's probably what I would. Have uh, I don't even know at nine what I was even reading. I don't That's, even know if I was reading. It was a anything. long time ago for all of us, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You're making me go back. Normally my memory is pretty good. I'm trying to think of the earliest like books I read. Mm. It was like Lord of the F- No, Lord of the Flies was later. Maybe Hitchhiker's Guide I read earlier than Ooh, that. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, I could have been the hungry caterpillar. I forgot about that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what was out. Oh, that guy that looked like the hedgehog guy. Sonic. No, 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 oh. no. What is this thing called? Uh, the little little critter, whatever that guy was called. Little critter. This, this guy. I'm gonna put this guy in in chat for everyone to look at. Okay. This guy. Uh, I can't remember his name. This little oh! little critter. But... Oh. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. This guy. The little, I don't know what you would call him. He's like a hedgehog porcupine bear thing. <laughs> beaver? He's a beaver? I don't know what the hell this guy is. But I love him and I could, I could be like him. He's a little critter, love, yeah. Yeah, I love he's, how a he's just like a mutated version of like 12 different apples. Like, which one yeah, should I'm we not pick, sure how guys? you would describe just this little do guy. Ball. <laughs> I love little critter. I could be him. That was a solid book when I was a kid. Yeah, that's another good one. Yeah. There was a there was a series of books that I started reading um, and I was like, yeah, it's got lots of like action and stuff because I, I had started to get an, into Animorphs and I was oh, like, no. I, want, I want more stuff like this. Right. Um, and started reading this series. I wish I, uh, I could remember what it was called. But um, at a certain point, uh, two people made out and I was like, no, too much. Too much for me. It's <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, what a body book that I've wound up with. I somewhere around this office have a full collection of choose your own adventure books. And <gasps> oh my god, I've I love saved those them ones from I when I, read, yeah. Right? I have every single one. I've saved mm-hmm. them from when I was a kid. And more importantly, Aww. I know exactly what my original path was in every single one. That's so and cool. My, fa- my favorite one was the ninja one because the story's supposed to be like you're a radio DJ and you get sucked into a world of ninjas. 
except in the first in the beginning of it, there literally is like you can there's a call to adventure, and it's the best thing in the it made me so happy as a kid. <laughs> there's a call to adventure, and you can literally just be like, nah. <laughs> and then you go to the last page, and it's like you went back to work for the night and continued being a radio DJ for the rest of your life. And I was like, that's a pretty good story. <laughs> It's I really that. funny. Yeah. Choose your own adventure books. You got books. a job and did it forever. Great. Mm-hmm. That was good oh. stuff. I Yeah, I have them somewhere. I don't even remember those. The, I, well, I, the, I think the reason I like those so much was I think um, early in my gaming life on, like, the OG, like, Commodores, like, they, the RPGs were just, like, type in what do you want to do. Mm, look, that's true, turn yeah. Turn on light, you know, turn on light, look under bed. Stuff like that. So they, that's, I think that's what like programmed me into liking those books so much. I'm like, oh man, that was actually really cool. I remember that. Mm. If you like that, might I recommend a game if you have not mm. played it already? Um, a House Abandon. Ooh. Uh, imagine a game that is very similar to what you're talking about where you're typing in stuff, but the game takes place in a room where you see the computer screen, but you're also in a room. And let's just say... It gets a little spooky. Very Ooh. cool. One of my favorite indie games that I've ever played where it's just like real simple, real sweet. It's so good that they took that game and then made a bigger game out of it where there's multiple short story games in one game. Oh, sweet. Very cool stuff. But House Abandon is really cool. Absolutely love it. Yeah, the, the full thing is called Stories Untold. But the one very specific one is House Abandon. And that's worth playing. It's really neat. Ooh. Yeah. This is cool. So, yeah, I'm already. I'm, I just watched like a quick video on it. It is straight up what you're talking about, but like to the next level, which mm. is always. Those fun. were so good. That was my. That was like. I think that was my first like real immersive like type of thing when it came to gaming. Like and old then, like, muds. Then yeah, the muds, and then um. I think Mist was like the next one. Oh. It became more graphical. Mist. Mist like, is that game where, as a kid, if you solved any puzzle, you felt like a genius. <laughs> Literally, because, yeah. If you figured out anything to do with that game, you're like, oh shit! There. <laughs> mm -hmm. From moment one, I remember the very first time I played, being confused out the gate, being like, I don't even know where to go right now. <laughs> like that game, it was amazing, but also had some. Um, just beautiful moon logic. Just, yep, yeah. yep, this is how this puzzle works. And you're like, what do you mean? Huh? They had the, the first that time would... I used the walkthrough. Oh, yeah. You couldn't figure that game out. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, didn't they have like the, they, they have like a lot of the games then were like videoed, right? Like they just videoed a person instead mm -hmm. of. Yeah, FMV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, they had that, a whole storyline, but it would take you so long to finish a puzzle that you'd even forget <laughs> what was going on, or I would. I, I will say that uh, two of my favorites, uh, I believe it's Seventh Guest and Eleventh Hour, I think those are the names, um, those those games from back in the day that I think were on Mac or something, they re-released one of them on in VR now, so you can experience the FMV stuff. And people talking to you, but in VR, it's very cool. Uh, I would recommend that highly for people who miss those old school days. Mm. Or it, it, they're still, they still got Tex Murphy games coming out, so you can play Tex Murphy too, which is equally as cool. But if you want to, like, uh, yeah, Seventh Guest was a, an amazing game. One of my favorites. Um, so look it up if you want to see an old school FMV point and click that still was a ton of fun. You could tell every actor was having a blast. They're like, ooh, I'm <laughs> yeah. a guest. And you're like, yeah. I'm trying to think about it. I'm just thinking about all those games. I was like early PC era. What was, oh, like King's Quest. I was doing a ton of, what was it? Yep. Full Throttle. Do you remember that game, Full Throttle? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Fucking that one. That one I played probably about 900 times. Mm hmm Uh god those oh what else was around that time i'm trying to think all the sierra games the sierra games i like ate up mm -hmm. command and conquer yeah oh, the indiana oh. jones one all of that yeah oh all of all of the lucas arts games sam and max indiana jones the fate of atlantis uh Oof. the early 
TIE Fighter and X-Wing games. Mm-hmm. Um, th- like, there's so many good... Oh, yeah, Space Quest, Police Quest was good. Police um, Quest. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the original SimCity was a banger. Uh, oh, yeah, Day of the Tentacle, Monkey Island. Black and White was solid. Um, I'm trying to think. Police Unfortunately, Quest. a lot of those, Jesus. because of what we've come to expect quality of life-wise from games, they do not age well for current oh. gamers at all. <laughs> no. there's a. I went back because uh, GOG had a sale where they were selling all the original Star Wars games. I was like, oh, my God, I played hundreds of hours of TIE Fighter. I'm so excited. Downloaded TIE Fighter, the CD version, which is like the updated version. Mm. Your whole keyboard (laughs) is used. Everything. You manage every part of that TIE Fighter from like the shielding to the power of the weapons, the power. There's so much going on that I'm just like, this is so unplayable. And and I think it was like (laughs) 2020. I was like, I can't. My brain is not wired this way anymore. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. This is too much. The fact that you were able to play that at all at a certain point in your life is pretty impressive. That's, but again, it was, you know, a lot of the games looking back seem insane. Like one of my favorite games of all time is Vagrant Story for PlayStation 2. Vagrant Story is such a fun game. It's so good, Mm -hmm. but unplayable today. The jump button and the attack button are the same button. (laughs) Really? Like think of, like you had to enter combat. Right. And yeah. it, so like a combat thing would happen and then you attack because you can't jump in combat. So you would attack with oh, the attack button. But when you're out of combat, the attack button still the jump is, is the jump button. Right. So it's it's just like a weird. I don't know why they programmed it this way, but clearly at the time they're trying to do a thing. And by today's standards, it's like, wait, what is just another level of complexity that's unneeded? Mm hmm. And so you can understand things are like why. two or three buttons back then. They didn't have like exactly, yeah. you know. So they had That's to like true, figure yeah. out multi-use on each of the yep on each of the controls of it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I know that like with that X-wing game, they, they, they probably there's probably some super nerdy dude who just developed the shit out of it. He's like, they either learn it my way or they're I'm not I'm not developing a stupid version for them. <laughs> I did learn it his way to the point where I was making yeah. custom games for tie fighter where you could like set up that. your own scenarios and do like i was in it you would i would <laughs> like in the year 2000 uploads it was 2000 the game had been out for like years at that point and i was still uploading mods of like here is a difficult challenge level i've created and i'd upload it like you have to protect these three star destroyers from an entire rebel fleet and i'd upload this and i was just in it and then I guess it's like high school Spanish. I learned what I learned and then forgot it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So maybe a couple words. Your, br- your yeah, brain yeah. was so delighted <laughs> when it could throw that shit away. It's like that took up so much space, dude. I'm so glad we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. And then I filled it with other useless crap. So, like you know. Do. <laughs> yeah. Um, just looking at pictures of police quests. I, I'm, I'm like trying to relive some of this. You know what just flashed into my head? Huh. Syndicate. Do you remember the game Syndicate? No, I never played it. Where you would control four dudes in trench coats <laughs> and go around the streets and like, we got to take down the bad guys, but we're also the bad guys in a cyberpunk future. If you ever want to just flash back this. to a game that, man, this might be 1994. Five, six. Syndicate was awesome. Syndicate made you feel like you were a cool dude. That was a good game. I, I love see that. the theme and the style of it. it. Actually, looks pretty sweet. I come. I, I don't know how this never hit my radar. I mean, because it's old, like old, old. Mm. Uh, I'm sure 1993 is when Syndicate came out. My God. That how old 10. was I? <laughs> six. Yeah. Six years old? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Syndicate was too cool for you. It was way too cool for me. Yeah. I was still watching my brother play Doom. Look, that's not supposed to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, my not supposed to do was uh, I went and got a, a disc copy of Laser Shoot Larry Love for sale. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I had, to, I had to play it in secret. And my parents were out of the house because I was terrified that they discover that I was playing a point and click game that had boobs in it. Mm. Here's the thing. Yeah. It didn't really have boobs. It was the 
the insinuation of boob. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> dude, she's naked in that room, but you got to find a way in. Oh, leisure suit, Larry. Like, it was nothing. <laughs> Those games had nothing. But it was like, oh, this is dirty. Mm. I don't want this man's trying to have sex. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I remember that. Um, <laughs> yep. I loved watching my brother play Doom, but my parents didn't want me to do that. Uh, I also always wanted to watch Beavis and Butthead, but I wasn't supposed to watch Beavis and Butthead. And oh, Beavis and Butthead on Windows 95. I wanted Windows 95 because it came, like, you could only play it on that. Oh, like, the Beavis and Butthead game? And, <laughs> yes. The, the, <laughs> oh, my God. You start looging it off the rooftop on people. Like, that was a game. Mm. <laughs> it, was, it was so good. The that good, was such the a good, good old game. days. <laughs> the good that was a good days. game, though. Yeah, I went to someone's house. I forget. There was a big guy. I remember, like, it's so funny. I remember, like, the weird little spots in life. I remember the dude was hard of hearing, or he was, like, yeah, very much so. And, like, he was showing me the game. And I'm like, oh my God, you got a nice computer. It's like, you can play this on here. That's crazy. So I sat up there. I spent, like, I screw the party. I was up there all day. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was a really good one. That's a really good point that most of my memories about playing video games early in life aren't the game itself. It's mm. being over at my friend's house in his bedroom playing Nintendo, uh, the hockey game, where it had the three guys, the skinny guy, the fat guy, the medium guy. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah, that. yeah. I remember us oh playing God. that and trying to get them to crash through the ice. I remember being at my uncle's house and being scared so to death of... Uh, Castlevania 2 because it went and when night came I'd freak out because night was coming and I was like a kid I remember that I remember playing Goldeneye in the basement of a friend's house at like 4 a.m. right mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. all those little things that's what I remember not like wow what a what a great game that was like yeah. I remember Contra letters, yeah. I remember Contra not because it was Contra. I remember Contra because my friend would get Contra mad, which was a thing, TM. <laughs> and he would scream at the TV, my ass. He'd go, your ass is grass and I'm a lawnmower. And he'd get really mad. And I'm like, this is the funniest shit. Like that kind of stuff is what mm. I remember. And I, I think that's. I think a lot of the nostalgia is built off of that, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I could think of so many different places. The, the big ass like shitty projector TV that was just gigantic playing Mario, like, you know, Mario three on that man. Like it was, mm -hmm. or, or I didn't have the system. My neighbor did. I'd be like, remember going over there, like playing paper yes. in the basement or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it's, it, that's a lot. I, I think that's where a lot of it comes from to like bring you back to that whole time frame of your life. And I would just watch friends like I, I I didn't have a Nintendo Nintendo. I I only got a Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. So before that happened, I would have to go over to a friend's house and like Nintendo it up. I watched my friends beat both Zeldas. I watched my friends beat Mario one, two, and three. Yep. I like you know, and I I would help because I didn't I wasn't playing all the time. I always felt like a hindrance. Like I don't know what I'm doing. So I just watched my friends stomp Mario three and be like, Wow, you're so good at video games. He's like, yeah, my brother taught me all my moves. I'm like, your brother's the coolest. I bet we can all remember our rental place, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. My dad, I will never forget my dad coming in while I was playing uh, Harvest Moon. And he was like, we could have bought it for cheaper than how many times you've rented that game. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I remember the That's back room of the Final rental Fantasy place. <laughs> Just kept renting it. <laughs> Yeah, I kept well, running Final Fantasy VIII. That's yeah. I, I the game the the oh what the hell is that the VR Game Boy whatever that whatever that one was the called. Virtual Boy. Yeah, the Virtual Ooh. Boy. I rented that from Blockbuster Video. Um, Ours was a Blockbuster too. It was you know it was a thing. I, I was at the time I was like wow it's so cool. It was very red, and uh, I played tennis on it. But you know it was a good three day fun time. But it was like all right. I'm glad I rented that instead of buying it. It was so disappointing when a new game came out. I was like, let me rent that game. It's like cleared out. You see all the, yeah, after the cases all there was nothing. Yeah. When they were on CD, it became a, such a pain in the ass because half the time you get it and be like, someone Skipping. purposely scratched the hell out of it. And you're like, I just want to play the game, man. Yeah. yeah. Nobody checked on either. It's, uh... Oh, never, never. It's, yeah. <sighs> I mean, it's, a, it's weird it went out of business.
but <laughs> <laughs> very wild. Uh, yeah, shout, wild. shout out to when there were stickers on everything that said "Be kind, rewind." Mm-hmm. An old era. We never had a VCR, so I never had that life. You never oh, had a VCR, really? really? We never have a VCR. I, oh, as a maybe in eleventh grade, bought a VCR because my parents still would not get one. So I bought one for my own room because I was like, "Guys, I need something." So I bought a VCR DVD combo, which, by the way, damn, uh, oh, man, I used to sell those. is <laughs> right. Which again, a reminder is the major plot point of the first Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> Just remember that. <laughs> As they fly through space and fist fight each other like superheroes, the first movie was them stealing DVD VHS hybrids. So <laughs> just remember that. Remember that's it's where it's part started. of history, is what he's saying. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 Well, you watched Tokyo Drift for the 55th time. Yeah. And, remember uh, oh. that that before they were drifting, they were stealing <laughs> VHS players. Yeah. <laughs> oh I'm proud God. of them. They've I come so seen, far. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so you really didn't yeah. have a lot of movies in your life at that time then. I I mean, I would see movies, but I never, like, that's why I don't own movies now. Like, as a mm-hmm. kid, I never collected movies. So I don't have any movies in my home at all, except Man. for stuff that people give me, which I have three movies now because people just give me movies. But, um, like, I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I, my parents did, my, my parents were always like, next time we'll get the thing. We'll get the mm-hmm. thing. So oh. instead of a Nintendo, I got a Super Nintendo. Instead of uh, a VHS player, my parents got a Laserdisc player. Oh, my God. Oh, mm-hmm. God. Why would they do that? My dad so, got a uh, mini DVD player when mini DVDs were supposed to be the next big thing. He yeah. still has So we it. had a Laserdisc <laughs> player and we watched exactly six movies on it because that's all that was available. Uh, <laughs> and I remember them. One was Star Wars. One was Batman Forever with Jim Carrey. One was uh, The Sphere. I think that's what that was called. And uh, we, Jurassic Park. And then two that I can't remember, but like literally just that was it. There was there were no movies available for Laserdisc, but um, yeah. So that was a purchase that they made. Man. They were always like the next thing is what's going to be. And then I saw that and was like these suck. So <laughs> I never I never like buy. Yeah, it's because you had like, you had a shitty device to learn on. You're like yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm not like a buyer of like oh I gotta have that new tech. I'm like. Mm. Well, mm. you're living in a very good era for that. A lot of people don't own yeah. movies anymore. That's true. Yeah, I mean, forcefully, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> you don't own your games either. So, you know, it's chill. Have fun. It's it's wild. I, I was talking with Sam about this, but like we're coming full circle now because there are people who are making videos like here's how to uh, watch a movie on Netflix and then record it onto a VHS tape. Or a DVD so that you can keep it. <laughs> it's like, we're back. We're back, baby. We're back in it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I guess I the exclusives. A, yeah. That's I, all I you saw really a guy want. the other day post a thing that was like, if you don't own any of the things you're paying for, then is it really illegal to pirate it? And I was like, I don't, oh, God. I, I don't know, man. I don't know anymore. I have no <laughs> idea what the rules are. There are no rules. Not anymore. Yeah. Mm. I, well, well, I mean, you know, it's a, uh, we're back to the point where everything you're paying for again is roughly cable. The <laughs> other day I saw they were like combining six streaming platforms into one. I'm yes. like, so it cable. was inevitable. <laughs> it's cable. Yeah. Yeah. Which I guess I apparently has, is always the plan. Every time stuff like this happens where it's like, create a new product, make it cheaper than the other products, and then get everything else to shut down, and then you jack up your prices and make it what the product was before. Like, that's the gimmick. Mm. And it's like, wait, that's always the plan? Like, yes, that's always the plan, which is crazy to me. So basically, it's like, kill cable, recreate cable. (laughs) It's like, wait, what? But now we run the cable. It's like, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, most cable companies now offer, like, Hey, if you if you have us for cable, then you also get, you know, a year of free Netflix and you can use your cable login to have Paramount Plus. And like, you know, they right. they're starting to like basically, yeah, consider streaming services as part of cable, which is really interesting. It's just like the the problem though is that they have like 
all these individual things. It's probably like I get who who knows how many different streaming services there are. And now they're like kind of like joining efforts. Yeah. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, I've just paid for both of them. And now they say like this one's offering this one. So it's like you, you have to like <laughs> I gotta just cancel them all and then figure out like the right way to do it because I'm sure Honestly, there's like combo deals that save you money. That is what I, uh, I had a moment at the beginning of the year where I was just like, I have all these streaming services and I think I watch two things and the rest of the time I just flip through them like, nope, 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 nope. And so I canceled. You don't know where everything. anything is either. Yeah. Yeah. I canceled <laughs> everything except for, uh, HBO that comes with the cable that we already have mm-hmm. and Netflix my parents use so I can't cancel that that's it mm. everything else I was like I'm canceling it all the problem is is I was lo- I'm like Paramount Plus is a great example I clearly paid for a year up front oh, so I still shit. have it yeah. <laughs> but I'm like I just don't I guess I'll keep it on my TV, even though I just want to remove it. But like, I guess maybe I'll watch something on there. I haven't. They got all the tracks. They have all the tracks on the Paramount Pluses, you I'm know. Like, yeah. All right. But like, <laughs> I think my favorite one's there's Disney. There's nothing. There's nothing that I want to watch. Like, a great example is Disney Plus. I'm like, yo, I I don't have Disney Plus anymore. Mm-hmm. I just I was like, mm, no I'm over. The only thing I would watch on there would be stuff for the show I did with Marvel stuff or star wars and i just get upset because i was like i don't think i like this oh yeah <laughs> oh really except for andor uh, which i loved the rest of everyone's like dude you gotta check out uh bad batch i'm like okay no I'm no like, if i turn one half like yeah that yeah, i lost I that immediately for me yeah no. it's fine it's not for me clearly but you know i'm like all right i'll when andor season two comes out i'll pay for it a month and then go back but like i don't you know, I just, it's, it's too much. Yeah. Even Amazon, which it, it, even Amazon's like, yo, I know you're paying for a thing, but do you also want commercials? It's like, no, no, I, I don't give you money. Stop doing that to me. Now they're like, <laughs> well, if you give us more money, no commercials. I'm like, this is what everyone has done. And it's just so tiring because you're like, all right, we bought into the idea of what this was. And now you're just screwing us over again. Like, all right, cool. Isn't so. isn't the aren't the commercials the angle to make it cheaper? <laughs> you know, like the add the same price, add it, and then pay more. Which is, I think Hulu wasn't yeah. Hulu like fucking like free in the beginning, and then like just had ads all the time. Yeah, I H- Hulu. Yeah, Hulu started putting ads in to the point where they were like, "Hey, do you want no ads? Pay more." Same thing with Amazon. That's where it that, like. It's always the same thing. And even I think Netflix is doing that now where they're like, hey, look, we got to subsidize the costs of let's stop making $200 million shows. No one watches you goobers. Right. Yeah. Like, they're so dumb. But whatever. <laughs> I, I I honestly found myself uh, being like, what if I just started reading more? What if I just like <laughs> at night? didn't watch TV at all and just started reading books. Yeah, dude. And so that's where I'm at mentally. I'm just over it. <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, none of this is doing me any favors. I'm paying a bunch of money for stuff I'm not using. Like, why on earth would I keep doing this? And so now I'm like, what What should I be doing with my life instead? Like, what if I read the classics? And I went back and, like, that's where I'm at. So, sure. Will I? I don't know if that's going to actually happen. But the thought was there, and that's what counts. Yeah, I go through more and more stages where I'm really, I have a hard time getting through whole ass novels unless they're like a really specific vibe. Um, but novellas, novellas have been very good for me because they're normally like 200 pages max. You know, <laughs> they don't take too long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've never been reading. My, 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 my rite of passage to Boomerland is uh, playing chess now. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah it's a good so I one getting into, i needed i needed something to challenge my lazy ass brain so that was a, uh, <laughs> and it appealed to my like competitive nature so it, it's like it's like quick rapid fire 10 minute games mm. just beat the shit out of people on those i feel like i'm so much smarter than people it's it's great <laughs> I've, I've got i've got the whole thing figured out it's great the good I, uh, chess, is, neighbor. chess is good <laughs> And incredibly humbling. 
Because you always feel like you're great until you meet a player who actually is and they stomp you. And oh, uh, I learned, I will always share that when I was a teacher, my the guy across the hall, Mr. Piamonte, the science teacher, every day after school, he would be like, Jesse, come to my room, let's play. And I'm like, I got stuff to grade. He's like, it won't take long, which I always knew was demeaning. He's like, it won't take long. So I go over to his room <laughs> and we'd sit there and every time this son of a bitch would be like, your move. And I'd start playing my hardest and he'd like, <laughs> checkmate. I'm like, how bro? How? And he's like, I've been winning for four turns. And I'm like, <laughs> Every okay. time. And he would every time play me like that. And every time I'd be like, I'm going to get you today. I'm going to get you. And he's like, okay, come on. And then he beat me. I was like, is this how you take your, your anger for the students out on me? Is this what happens? You had a bad day and then you like play chess with me. And then he beats my ass. It was great. I learned, I learned humility quickly. I bet. From that yeah. man. He was like, <laughs> I'm very good at this. It's like, okay. I always thought yeah. chess took like like two hours every time you played it, and then like I started playing online. I'm like, this is like you can destroy someone super quick. Yeah, it's, oh yeah, I, uh, I don't know. That's kind of what I why I never played it growing up. Maybe because it was so confusing in the beginning. Like you had to remember. It's honestly very simple. Once once you become like a gamer, like what are you trying to say, Tim? Does, that if you're not I'm good just, at chess, you're not a gamer. Well, no, I said once, I'm a, yes. once I became a That's gamer, I could understand more concepts at once. So when you look at chess, it becomes a lot more simple sure. later on when you, you know, when I'm you develop those types chess. of ideas. <laughs> but yeah, chess, chess was, it was, you know, the thing. So I've been watching like chess videos and poker videos. Like those, those are like my like residual always go back to. I enjoy watching people play poker. Because there's such a weird them. psychological element as to Both the whole game. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like they always pop on my feed, and I always click them. Mm. It's like Brad Owen, I think he's in Vegas right now in like some huge tournament, and like he's someone I always watch. When it first pops up, I always watch it. Mm. I don't know what it is about poker. He's really <laughs> good too. That's like me with craps. Oh, I love craps. I'm obsessed with craps because it's like. A total brain game. I can't it's even imagine like what craps looks map. like. Can you pitch craps to me? Craps is it's the it's the dice, dice die game. game where you roll and uh, depending on the number that appears, multiple variations of things can happen. Okay. So a great example is it's always seven and eleven are kind of like the things to focus on, but it just depends. So a great example is when you first start, you have a you have a board in front of you, and everyone's standing around this play area. And you're placing money on numbers. So it's like, okay, I think that whatever this dice is going to be, it's going to be like, it's, so the first bet would be like, it's not going to be a seven, for example. To okay. It's a weird, it's a weird like introduction part. Like this is always a confusing part. Yeah. When so like, before I remember it starts, people there's, explaining it. Like, so, so you're, you're going to roll and you can bet either with the table or against the table. Okay. So, and that can be infuriating because if you're a bunch of people around the table and you all like, we're going to not get a seven. Guys, we're not going to get a seven. So put your money on not getting a seven. And then Mo some and most other people guys, bet that way. And then some other guy's going to be like, I bet we hit a seven. And you all lose your money. Right. And so that happens. And if that happens, you roll seven. That guy is dead to me. Anyway, <laughs> so okay. you it's so bad roll. when they walk up with a giant pile of chips to oh, the yeah. fucking big dog is like, oh, don't pass. That's, that's called don't pass that one. <laughs> so you, you roll the die. And let's say it's a six, right? Okay. So, all right, hooray, we got a six. Now, no one won anything, but it means we can actually play the game now. Okay. And so what ends up happening is you place money everywhere on the board. So it could be like, I think that we're going to hit some fives. So I'm going to put $5 on five. Or I think that we're going to hit um, a six, but I think it's going to be two threes. So I put that, and that's worth like nine to one, Hard something six. like that. Yeah. So okay. that's like, that's really good. If you hit two threes, that's, you can put it everywhere. You can be like, I think we're going to get a 12. Or you, know, you can put money, literally any combination you can think of is on that board. And so the next, the person who rolled, rolls again. And whatever that is, you get paid out for that. So if it's if it's a, a five and I have money down, if I have like five on five, I might make back 
a certain amount of money, like five dollars eighty cents, something like that. It's all like there's like crazy amount, but you make back chips, right? Mm. And it keeps going, and you put more money down, and it keeps going, and you're making more money. And they just keep until, paying you out as you go, yeah. Yeah, until that guy rolls a seven. And the oh. board and it hits the white. seven, everyone loses everything. Okay. Interesting. That's on the board. And so you literally are just basing it entirely on the roll and the odds of, okay, we haven't had a seven in a while. Chances are we're going to get a seven. So do you pull stuff or do you You commit? can pull all your bets back too. Like you can take yeah. the money back off the board. Like, mm -hmm. give me the bag. Every single time. And so the way I'll play it is if I win more than I put down to begin with, I'll put that in my pocket and then I'll just play with what I have left. Because the assumption is you want to gamble with what you have left in order to make more. Right. Okay. And so when you make money, like if I make five, in theory, I want to take that five and put it back on the board so I can make even more money. Mm. And so there are times where you could play and be up $700 and then someone rolls a seven and you lose all of it. Right. And that's the vibe. And so it's a big yeah. hit or miss game, but it's, it's fascinating the loudest, It's the loudest table in the casino. If you ever walk into a casino, everyone's <laughs> screaming. That is yeah. definitely the craps It's craps. Table. Okay. Yeah, 100%. Because yeah. I mean, it's... It's about the strategy of odds and averages versus the strategy of like figuring out what cards next or trying to sort of poker your way to victory by bluffing or like this is straight up just a man's rolling or a woman's rolling and it's whatever fate is, you know, and sometimes you get an old lady who just kills it and she keeps going and then sometimes you get this young dude who comes in and he's like, all right, I'm here to win us some money and then he takes all your money and you're like, I hate this game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you think about it, the seven. The seven is your like bad roll, but like you think about it, like s how many different combinations, like one six, two five, you know, all these mm -hmm. different combinations that could come out, and that's like kind of like with a six and eight too. Those are most common, but it doesn't pay out as well. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you have like a four or a ten, you know, that you're betting on, that gives you more money if they hit. So. Gotcha. Yeah, and you have to you have to figure out like the odds because again, a seven can be like you were saying a six one, a five two, a four three, right? You can do all these different things. Meanwhile, if you get a six, that's only two dice rolls you can get, right? You, you, there's only there's only so much you can do with that. Actually, that's a lie. There's there's five one. There's a bunch. Never mind. Ignore that. <laughs> So six, uh, but six, there's eight, other ones. Six eight's the most uh -huh. common like okay. winners. Yes. Hold on. There's yeah. other ones. Five nine like, is a little if, less. Like, you know, a three is tough or there's different things, right. but those also pay out in different ways. So it's, it's a, it's a interesting game. It's also it's incredibly familiar. frustrating, but it's also the loudest, absolutely correct. It's the loudest table in a casino because if you make it big mm. and it, you get a roll going, so much money appears and you just well, have to be smart enough to... If you're a hot roller, people start throwing money at you. They're like, you're good. Keep, <laughs> they keep tipping yes. you, like throwing you money. It's like, okay. Like, you're thanks. doing it because you're making them so much money. The, right. Yeah. yeah. And it's so much money so quickly sometimes. Because again, if you put down like, okay, I we got a six going back to a six. And it's like, if I put down three threes and you land that for me, you made me a ton of money. So I'm going to be ex extra happy for you. And that's that's inherently the problem because it's like, well, we've done so well and we're winning so much. If I just put down a little bit more, I will shortly make twice as much. Right. And then it just you're like <laughs> vanishes. Well, glad I did that. Yeah. Interesting. It's it's an interesting game. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch people pay, play craps tonight. You're gonna be so confused. It's such a weird game to like figure out. But once it once it clicks, it makes a lot of sense. It's just yeah. it is clearly a it very click, odd game to learn. I don't know all the combinations of six. So, you know, <laughs> just, all I'm saying is there's a lot of variations and variables. And so, like, if you can find what works for you, like your strategy, mm. and remember that it's a long game rather than a get rich quick game, yeah, then you'll do well. Yeah, last time I went to Vegas, I spent my 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 hard cap was five hundred a day that I would withdraw from the ATM. Mm -hmm. So, and I came back sitting at the craps table after I think I spent like twenty hours over like a whole weekend, and I came back with like five grand. <laughs> so it was it was it was like so it worked I, out. I had end. this very simple strategy, and that was a long amount of time at the table. Mm. Yeah, 
It's just you go simple, you go easy, it's and so you can fun. do it. Don't be like me. I'm a problem. I'll be like, guys, I'm doing so well right now. What if I did even better? And then some guy walks in. He's like, this is my first table of the day. Roll. Goodbye, money. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. So I'm bad at gambling, which is why I don't gamble that much. Mm. I'm like, mm, I can't. I know I'm going to lose this, so I'm just going to not. It's Yeah, I think I've know. gambled twice in the last 10 years or so. <laughs> Yeah, well, I do. I do it. for the free drinks, so I try to go with the best odds all the time. Sure. <laughs> so, so I do six and eight. I always do six and eight, and maybe a five or nine with craps. And then I sit mm -hmm. there all day just <laughs> drinking. <laughs> it's smart. It's a, it's a. That's the best way to do it. Is if you find a table, sit there. Let's keep bringing you drinks, and they're like, "Here you go, sweetie." And you're like, "They." A great example of that kind of vibe. There is a casino game, um, and it might not be there anymore in Vegas. I don't know, but it was only at like two or three casinos okay. and it was the deal or no deal game. And God. It, it's a slot. It's a slot machine game, yep. but there's a big screen and there's five people that play. And as you play, what it is, it's very simple. You just do the slots and the slots roll through and you're not trying to get any big money payouts. What you're trying to get are briefcases. And mm. if you get one briefcase, you're in the final drawing. But if you get two briefcases, it's a time two multiplier. If you get three brief, so on, so on. So your objective is to put in enough money to get at least one briefcase. And then if you have the ability to like do more, go for it. And so what happens is if you just do the one briefcase, because the, the game, the big game only runs once every 15 minutes, right? Mm. So what you would do is you would gamble just enough to get a briefcase. And then Howie Mandel would be like, Come on, let's play. And you just ignore his ass. And then every <laughs> once in a while, so the game doesn't boot you, you make one roll. And then maybe you might get like a two times multiplier, but whatever, you make one roll. And you just keep it going for that 15 minutes. You sit there and just talk with friends. And like, all right, well, I got mine. And then when the game starts, that's the real game and how you make your money because you're playing, you're literally playing deal or no deal. So okay. you pick a case and then you just like with everyone else there, you're like, yo, I'm sticking with my case. Like I'm armed. And everyone's trying to make their own thing. Sometimes everyone playing picks the exact same case because it's like, we're in this together. Let's go. <laughs> and it's super fun. But the whole time you're just sitting there camped out getting free drinks brought to you. And you're spending Ooh. like six bucks every 15 minutes. The best deal in Vegas. Nice. It's like cheating nice. this game. That yeah. sounds amazing. It was great. And then and you most would, of the time, you probably get your money back anyway, barely, oh, if anything. Oh, when you do the do, deal or no deal part, if you have a time to multiplier, it doesn't matter what the hell you get. You've already made your money back. It was <laughs> it was such a good game. I don't know that it's there anymore, but it was the chillest vibe in any casino. Oh, yeah, there's definitely deal or no deal. I remember last time I was there. It was like, it's like, deal or deal. The, the thing is, Wheel of Fortune is never going away. No, deal or no deal, sure. and then just classic, you know, slots are always going to be... Someone's going to, they're going to keep a machine going just to make sure people want to spend money on us there. Yeah. Now they have those slots that are like, if you just put in the money, you can unlock this special, like they have an image that's shaking and money's popping out of it. And it's like, if you just put in enough money, you can get that mega lotto and it's, you're never going to get it. It's never going to happen. It's totally a fluke. The reason it's shaking and jiggling is to get your attention. It's such a scam. And I... No, I will scam them. It's only deal or no deal. That's all I want. <laughs> That's the best one there. Uno reverse. I am the one who scams. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, that's not true. I'm, every casino I've ever been in has taken my money. It's never. Yeah, never. No, not once have I felt like I came out on top. Gamble responsibly, uh, viewers and listeners. Yeah, don't fall for it. You're not going to make the money you think you're going to make. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see if I can understand how craps works. Oh, it's so much fun. I don't know. It, I don't know why. Now that you've described it to me, it sounds like a hoot. It's, it's it, a I lot. Mean, it is. It's, it, it's, it, it, well, it's cool because it's, it's dice, too. It's like everything else is cards. Like, it's like one of the only dice games in the casino. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any others. But um, you can also Dodger if you ever if you ever feel like I want to try it, yeah. But I don't want to do it in front of people. They have digital versions, of course they do. Where it's yeah. like oh, you yeah. go to the casino and you play by yourself, and there's like a sexy anime girl who's like, push the button, 
come on, <laughs> push the button, boobs. Right. And then you and then then you slam a button, and then the 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 big foam die in the middle bounce around, and then she's like six six high, and you're like okay, <laughs> all right, cool, cool. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. Push the button. Push the come button. On. Well, yeah. um, so we don't recommend that you gamble, but <laughs> uh, Tim Mac, at the end of all of our episodes, we ask our guest wow. to recommend one thing. It could be a, a show, a game, a movie, a book, comic, whatever. Something that you Ooh. think people should, should give a shot. Um, oh, well... So my things right now, I play I play piano. So I I always think someone should learn to grab an instrument and uh and do something with that. Hmm. Do something in, in some kind of creative outlet. I think is very important. Um, if we're talking media and feeding your brain with whatever is provided to you, um, oof, what do I have? What have I been? I mean, your homework can be plunk something out on an instrument yeah because i got this i got this keyboard i just bought this thing it's a uh, roland phantom 8 this guy this is this is my Ooh. baby right there i i've gone oh it's so pretty i love it i could you could learn like how to loop music and shit and all that stuff but uh, what if i if i were to say something different that kind of ties into all of this something i've really enjoyed if you haven't played it is bellatro it is an amazing mm -hmm. poker roguelike deck manipulation kind of magic-y type of vibe with joker power-ups and all that stuff. Bellatro is an amazing game if you haven't tried it. It sounds that like it might eight. be coming to mobile too. Yeah, is it? Appar Oof. Apparently they're testing it out, yeah. It is so good. It is so good. I, got, I was obsessed with it. I skipped streams. I was playing it all day. <laughs> really? God. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. our, our friend Brett also is playing it like constantly. <laughs> so, yeah, who did I think I saw some people uh, from our friend circle mm. that uh, popped up on here. Crendor, Crendor, ask him about it. He's he's definitely very much involved in that. <laughs> um, Joe Fudge, he's mm -hmm. he's around. <laughs> Not surprising. Uh, the 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 yeah. you know, just putting like different things on the sort of roguelite framework is so smart. And people love that shit. Me, G Mark, I'm John Sandman. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing that. Yeah, there's a there's a trend here going on. But yeah, it's uh no, I if if you like this because like I said, I'm like obsessed with like poker for some reason. So this was like a weird it's really cool. Like you build your jokers, so you get your points and you get your multiplier. Mm. And you're supposed to beat the ante, which is like, say, first round is 300. And then a full house with high enough cards, you have like eight, nine cards to choose from. And you could discard up to like four times. So if you have, so if you figure eight, nine cards, you can discard five. That's another like 25 cards that can come in. So that's almost like half the deck mm -hmm. that you can. So you can make these hands if you try hard enough. But mm. the idea is you build up these hands with enough point value and multiplier where you just have these extreme scores. And like you, it's a roguelike type of game. So like the first round, you're like 300. You get some money. Then you get to a shop and you're like, oh, I can buy this Joker, or this Joker. There's planet cards, which up like your score for a certain hand. So if you're like, I want to do... Um, I don't know, a full house build or something like that. And then it becomes like a flush house. So it's like a weird, um, like you could do just all flush, like duplicated numbers. So you could have like four, like, or, or you could have add like four extra cards exactly the same to their deck. So you could have like this, I don't know, two five of hearts, three seven of hearts or something like that, which is really odd. But hmm. so like you can have the building a flush house type of deck and it's, it's very cool. It's very, like, very, like, different, like, with the approaches you can take on it. Yeah. So, like, I could destroy cards or I could build up cards or I got this money build. Like, 
where the more money that my jokers were worth, the higher the multiplier were. And every time, every round, it builds up all of the value of the jokers. So you could sell these things off or just that adds to your like strength. Mm. It's, um, yeah, it's 15 bucks. It's, it looks it's like it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, very, it's obsessively good. I, I, <laughs> When, if you if you get hooked on it in any way, like I've got twenty three out of twenty seven achievements in the game, and I just lived Damn. it for like two days. Dang. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sounds like you played it a lot, then, dude. Yeah. No, I. Uh, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Actually, that was the wrong game. That was No Man's Sky. I played thirty five hours. Yeah, I might have left it open though. I don't know. I, I never know how long I've actually played a game. Didn't. I leave them open all the time. And people will come in and be like, how many hours do you have in this game? And I'm like, I don't know, but it's wrong. Whatever whatever number it says, that's not real. The higher the <laughs> so, number, the less of a buffer you get to call that out on. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Tim, I'm so glad that you came on the show. Yeah, I appreciate it. This is good. Uh, it. Please pitch yourself to everyone. Where can they find pitch you? What myself? do you do? Yeah. I'm not a sh I don't I'm not like a look at me type of streamer. I'm, I hide. <laughs> I hide in my corner. If you show Who, up or me? find your way there, welcome. I'm humble. So I refuse I don't. to I, shut I, myself well, out. The, the, <laughs> the problem is I see so much of it in GTA. I play GTA RP. Mm. And, you know, obviously I, I play Gomer Carlton, who's a hillbilly redneck lunatic. And then uh, my new character is Liam McMahon, which is my cop. They made me make a new cop. My old character wouldn't. I don't, I don't know why. It's, I'm not even getting into it. <laughs> but, um, um, but, yeah, I play, you know, he's a knowledgeable cop from the Bronx. You know, so I RP these characters. Um, and, uh, you know. The thing is, like, it's, I'm not really look at me type of person because I see it all in RP. Like, these, it's huge attention seeking, trying sure. to draw the crowds because there's eyes everywhere, and it's. I'm not about that life. I just, you know, people find out their way, and I can swear myself. That's what I do. But RP's been my gig for. I, mean, I think I'm hitting my partner anniversary, ten year partner anniversary this year. Oh, congrats! In the next couple congrats. months or so. Yeah. Are you gonna do something for it? You don't have to. You can say I no. Probably, <laughs> I, uh, I probably should so I can make some money off it. <laughs> we're, we're, on a, we're on a drought right now for me, so I gotta I gotta bring that back up. I always have to sure. do these like little gimmicks to get it back, but yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't mind once in a while, like a stubathon, stubathon or yeah, awesome. Anyway, All right, yeah, that's that's kind of what I do. Yeah, Twitch.tv slash Timac. That's me. Go, go follow him. Tim He's lovely. Mm -hmm. um, hey, everybody. Thanks so much for uh, watching slash listening to Geek Enders. If you shut up halfway through this or if you'd like to rewatch it, you will not find it here. The VOD will be on YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox, along with all of our Ooh. other Geek Enders episodes, if you'd like to watch those. Uh, Jesse also puts them up on uh, podcast websites. So if you have somewhere that you listen to podcasts, it should be there as well. Um, is there the reach? Yeah. Is there anything good, smart. Jessup that you would like to tell the masses? Remember, yeah. only you can keep watching this podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so true. Have an amazing weekend, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you next Friday. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah. You know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse, and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger. So give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger. So give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the weekend. On. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt.